Merry Christmas from Karen and Simon at I Do Canals. Hi. So, whew, we had a good Christmas, didn't we? We did. We, we ate lots. It's Boxing Day. The sun's out. Really, really nice. Where are we? We're in Stratford upon Avon. Stratford upon Avon. Behind us here is the River Avon. Way over there, we've got Bancroft Basin, which is at the end of the Stratford upon Avon Canal. These are the theatres behind us. We're going to talk about William Shakespeare quite a lot. There's some statues of him over there. We've, we were here last week, weren't we? We were, but there was snow on the ground and it was cold. The ice was like this. We've got a shot of a swan stuck in the lock, was being helped out by some volunteers. Yep. It got out. It was a, it was a happy ending, but it was so cold. We had to give it up. We had to use our, we had to use our um, standby video, yep. didn't we? We had to abandon it. I ended up having to go back to the car. It was just so cold. Even the brass monkeys didn't come out. It yep. was that cold. Absolutely freezing. So come on, we'll have a good look around. We're going to go and see Stratford Avon in detail. It's Shakespearean country, bit of theatricals. Karen, have you brought your horse's head? I have, but I don't know if he's coming out. He hasn't had enough carrots this Christmas, and he's, um, I'm afraid to say. Give him some sprouts, come on. The Stratford upon Avon Canal is in the South Midlands of England. The canal was built between 1793 and 1816. It runs for 25 and a half miles in total with 54 narrow locks and consists of two sections, the North Stratford Canal and the South Stratford Canal. The dividing line is at Kingswood Junction, where a shortcut, the Kingswood Arm, joins it to the Grand Union Canal. Following acquisition by a railway company in 1856, the canal fell into decline, the southern section being unnavigable by 1945, and the northern section a little later. The lock structures were rapidly deteriorating when the Inland Waterways Association began a restoration campaign led and directed by David Hutchings. Swarms of dedicated volunteers, prisoners from Hewell Grange, Army and Air Force work groups descended to clear and restore the waterway. David overcame large and minor problems, one of which was when the prison work party could not go home as an inmate had borrowed the bus to go to a football match. By 1964 the canal was navigable, although there was still some further work required. Of great importance, David had made his point that canal restoration was feasible, but also wanted by an increasing fleet of boat users and walkers. In July 1964, a flotilla of boats descended the canal to assemble for the official opening by the Queen Mother. Before some 20,000 spectators, she sailed across the Bancroft Basin into the river lock to cut the tape. The City of Birmingham Orchestra concert performed on a pontoon raft which kept breaking away. The 1812 overture was saluted by Royal Artillery Cannons, and the celebration was concluded with a magnificent formal dinner at which many awards were made. This is Bancroft Basin and is the remaining of a pair of basins that were here. The, the other was over here and was filled in um, in the 1930s. Uh, now it's Bancroft Gardens and it's a really nice place to walk. But back then this was a massive hive of activity. You had, between the two basins, there were ten coal yards. There was a skin yard, a glass yard. Uh, a cider press and a cooperage and they were all interconnected by a network of tramways that was owned by the Stratford upon Avon and the Morton Tramway Company and cargoes went up and down to the Midlands and back again. Later when they managed to get permission and opened up the connection here to the Stratford upon Avon, sorry to the, to the River Avon, they had an enormous greater range of destinations from which to take cargoes to and bring them from and it really opened things up. Today, it's a stunning place to just come out on a, on a day out. It's Boxing Day today. It's really sunny. It's, it's a bit cold, so wrap up. But the statues of Shakespeare and all these various characters over here, we're going to go take a look at that. And there's, there's an absolute mass of shops and cafes and restaurants. Some of them are afloat. And I highly recommend you come down to Stratford-upon-Avon Basin and come and see them and enjoy them. There are two bridges close to the basin crossing the River Avon. The tramway bridge, which has been Grade 2 listed since 1951, today is a pedestrian bridge crossing the Avon just upstream of the Basin Lock. The bridge was built in 1823, originally to carry a tramway track of the horse-drawn Stratford and Morton Tramway. It was designed by John Rastrick and it consists of eight elliptical arches. It's made from brick with ashlar-coped parapets. The Stratford and Morton Tramway was a 16-mile long horse-drawn wagonway which ran from the Canal Basin in Stratford-upon-Avon to Morton-in-Marsh in Gloucestershire, with a branch to Shipston on Stour. The main line opened in 1826, whilst the branch to Shipston opened in 1836. 
The tramway was used to carry black country coal to the rural districts of South Warwickshire via the Stratford upon Avon Canal. Limestone and agricultural produce went northwards. Goods traffic was conveyed by licensed carriers in their own wagons. They could also purchase an additional license, costing £12 a year, to carry passengers. By 1829, the tramway was making an operating profit, although profits were not sufficient to pay off the considerable debts which the tramway had accrued during its construction. The northern part of the tramway had fallen into disuse by the early 1900s and was dismantled by 1918. It has been since used as a public footbridge and is an important element in the landscape around the Royal Shakespeare Theatre. The southern section between Morton in Marsh and Shipson on Stour was converted into a steam railway in 1889 and continued in use as a minor branch right up until 1960. The Clopton Bridge, which is about 330 feet to the east of the tramway bridge, is a Grade 1 listed building and it's also a scheduled monument. It is a masonry arch bridge with 14 vaulted arches crossing at a place where the river was forded way back in Saxon times, hence the name Stratford. The bridge was built around 1484, financed by Hugh Clopton of Clopton House, who later became Lord Mayor of London. It replaced a timber bridge which was first mentioned in 1235 and which had been described by John Leyland as but a poor bridge of timber and no causey to come to it, very small and eel, and at high waters, very hard to pass by. Two arches were rebuilt in 1524, the bridge was again repaired in 1588 following flooding, and yet again in 1642, after an arch had been destroyed to block the army of Oliver Cromwell. In 1696, money was raised to elevate the parapets, which were as low as four inches in places. The bridge was widened at the north side, which is upstream, in 1811, and a ten-sided toll house tower added in 1814. A cast iron footbridge was added to the north side in 1827. John Leyland described the new bridge as a great and sumptuous bridge upon Avon at the east end of the town, which hath fourteen great arches of stone and a long causey made of stone, low walled on each side at the west end of the bridge. So as you cruised your way down the Stratford and Avon Canal, come underneath Bridge 69 over here and are landed here in Bancroft Basin. You've got 48 hours free mooring. You might need that long because there's a multitude of eateries. You've the Pen and Parchment, the Encore, the Arden, the Swan, Cox's Yard, to name but a few. Not to mention either the most famous theatre in the world, the Shakespeare Theatre here behind us. There's actually three theatres there. We'll talk about that in a little cutaway in a minute too. But there's also a, a multitude of statues and monuments not just to William Shakespeare. There's one over here that's incredible about William Shakespeare. Absolutely recommend you come down here to Bancroft Basin, either by boat or on foot or in a car. You can park over there. It's between two and a half quid and five quid, depending how long you want to park up for. It's well worth it. Come and see it. Stratford upon Avon, Bancroft Basin. Fantastic. If you're in the winter, bring your woolies because it can be cold. We're coming back here in the summer. Some of the video in this section was recorded last week in the minus six wind chill, so apologies for the variation in continuity. So, there are three permanent theatres in Stratford upon Avon the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, the Swan Theatre, both of which stand in a shared building on the waterside, and then there's the other place, which is about a three minute walk away on Southern Lane. The Shakespeare Theatre Company also ran the temporary Lydia and Manfred Gorvith Garden Theatre throughout the summer of 2021, so that they could continue performances during the restrictions of COVID-19. This outdoor theatre in the Swan Gardens was home to the highly successful performance of the Comedy of Errors. The Garden Theatre was deconstructed in September 2021 and put into storage for future use. The Gower Memorial, which stands on the northern side of Bancroft Basin. This is a collection of statues that was moved here in 1933 following the destruction of the Shakespeare Memorial Theatre by fire, which occurred on the 6th of March 1926. The statue figures around the base are Hamlet, Lady Macbeth, Falstaff and Prince Hal. Each statue represents the variety of theatre. Hamlet represents philosophy, Lady Macbeth is tragedy, Falstaff is for comedy and Prince Hal is for history. Our video of Prince Hal was not very good. Very sorry, we have not included it. The Gower Memorial 
was given to the town in 1888, and the collection of statues took over ten years to sculpt, and was funded from Lord Ronald Gower's personal fortune. There is a fine statue of William Shakespeare as a young man in the Bancroft Gardens. Curiously, when we look closer, it looks like someone has applied a little eyeliner. Mm. The gardens and grounds around the basin are very popular for all sorts of performances. Whilst we were here last week in the ice and sleet, we saw this band of drummers who performed in the bitterly cold conditions, raising money for charity. The sound quality is not so good, as there was an annoying echo from Bridge 69, which lies between us and the drummers. We didn't get to learn of the name of the drummers or their charity. If you know, please let us know in the comments below. Back in 1974, my parents and good family friend Ian and all us kids were on the South Stratford Canal heading towards Stratford-Bonavon. We were somewhere between locks 38 and 32. My older brother Jonathan and I would work the locks. We'd run ahead and fill or empty the locks accordingly, ready for our family holiday narrowboat to proceed through. We'd been doing this for a few days and we'd become quite good at it. I was opening the lock gates whilst my brother Jonathan had run ahead to the next lock and had begun turning the sluice handle. It had a defective ratchet keep. Inadvertently, Jonathan let go of the handle. It swung viciously back and struck him smartly on the temple. This only came to my light when I ran forward to join him, ready to help him only to find him unconscious on the ground and in a growing pool of blood pouring from a big gash on his head. Alarmed, I sprinted back, alerted the parents and Ian, who sprang into action. My father and Ian, taking turns, ran across several fields for about a half a mile, alternately carrying Jonathan. I believe they flagged down a car on a narrow country lane, the driver of which drove all three of them to the hospital in stratford upon avon My father stayed with Jonathan, whilst Ian hitched to lift back to the boat, with the assistance of my mother and I, navigated it into the Bancroft Basin mooring. I remember my father making one of those comments that only parents would make. I was throwing stones from the pathway into the basin, and my father said, if everyone did that, there would be no stones left. OK. Today, the surrounding paths around the basin are block paved. Back then, they were gravel paths. It's a shame that whilst we were there in stratford upon avon for a few days at least, whilst Jonathan recovered, that we did not take advantage of the historical items of interest that were all around us. In the extreme icy conditions, the water birds of the Bancroft Basin, and of course the canal above it, really struggle to get around and feed. These poor ducks are slipping around on the broken ice. We mentioned the ice-trapped swan earlier on, and whilst we were just beginning to film last week, we came across this poor swan, trapped in the lock and with no way to get out. These local people stepped in, first by slowly emptying the lock, which caused the ice to break up. Once the level was down to that of the river, they carefully opened the gate so the lady swan could make her way out. You can see her really struggling to make her way over the ice. We learned that normally she was a resident of the basin and not the river. That is why she and the swans in the river raised their wings in a gesture of strength and defiance. I don't think there were any scuffles, just merely the posturing.
watching our video about Stratford upon Avon. Simon, where are we going next week? Well, next week we're either going to go to Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol, which I think is that way, or oh, and that's on a different Avon to this one, or we're going to go up the Stratford upon Avon Canal and uh, about six miles up and in about a four mile stretch there are three aqueducts one of them is quite historical we should go and do that and it, uh, one thing is guaranteed it'll be a lot quieter than here it we've, is, we've yeah. had a lot of fun here um, but it's been a bit tricky to get video done everybody's out today working off their christmas they're all here today there's kids running about there's dogs barking and shouting at one another and we're we got attacked by a multitude of geese earlier on. Well, when I say attack, they flew over the top, but it was all right. But it's been nice, isn't it? It's been nice. I, I think, do you want ice cream? Oh, no, not today. It's too cold for an ice Going cream. Go and get a drink, then. Yeah, maybe. Okay, come, come on, on then. then. So, so let's look. see you again, and uh, we hope you enjoy our videos. Have a look at some of, some of our others. Go and have a look at Pert and Hulks. Go and have a look at Foxton Inclined Plain and um, Cane Hill Locks. There's loads. Go and have a look.